Magandang araw and I'm so excited and happy to see you sa isa na namang lesson ng ating Bible Track series. My name is Mark and today, we continue with the New Testament books with the first letter to the believers in Corinth o yung tinatawag natin as 1 Corinthians. Titignan natin what makes a gospel-centered church in this lesson na ang tawag ay the foolishness of the kingdom. So, take out your Bibles, kung printed man yan or app, your pen, your uh, notebook, kung note or other note-taking apps, and let's dive into it. Welcome to Life Essentials because we want our roots to run deep. Question. Kung tatanungin kita to give an example of a healthy or model church, what church comes to mind? Anong meron yung church na naisip mo? Maybe a really good statement and expression of faith? Siguro yung may very good grasp of basics, di ba? Hindi siguro yung church na sasabihan mo ng I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now, you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and ha- behaving only in a human way? Yikes. That's the Apostle Paul who said that to his audience in Corinth. Siya na nagsulat nitong letter. Interestingly, he also said this about them. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in Him in all speech and all knowledge, even as a testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Interesting. You see, when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians about what should characterize a gospel-centered church, he did not address a church that had it all together. Hindi niya in-address yung Corinth because they were perfect and that they were the model for everyone else. Actually, malayo. But they did have that one thing that would lead them to becoming a healthy church. For all of their problems, they had Jesus Christ. Napaka-interesting ng mix ng New Testament books. May mga books tayo tulad ng Romans na punong-puno ng beautiful teachings about God's great truths. Oo nga pala, if you missed out last week's lesson on the Book of Romans with Brother Jimmy, check that out um, pagkatapos nitong video or pwedeng na na rin. And then there are also New Testament books na tulad nitong 1 Corinthians na very personal ang dating. Kung saan nagkakaroon tayo na idea about how Paul dealt with real problems that churches were facing during that time. So here are quick facts about 1 Corinthians. Number one, location. Corinth is a cosmopolitan city. O yung city na maraming citizen na galing sa iba't ibang countries and cultures. It was a center of business, travel, and culture. And it was so diverse, napaka-diverse nito. Para siyang main route from the east, papuntang Rome, na sentro ng known world that time. Think of it as an ancient New York City, or San Francisco, or Dubai, or London, and even yung mas malapit sa atin, Hong Kong. It was a crossroads. And dahil crossroads siya, it became a major center sa pag-spread ng ideas and philosophies. Bidang-bida yung mga orators o yung mga public speakers. They would amass wide followings of people and some would even earn large sums of money by charging people to hear them speak. Yung prevailing wisdom noon sa Corinth was to seek fame and wealth by being a really good speaker. And this culture seems to be at the heart of the problems of the Corinthian church. Number two, Paul's first trip. Nag-preach si Paul during his second missionary journey na makikita natin sa Acts 8. During this time, he supported himself as a tent maker and lived with Aquila and Priscilla na bagong lipat lang din that time sa Corinth, galing sila ng Rome. Paul came in weakness and in fear and with much trembling sa Corinth after niyang kuyugin ng isang mob sa Philippi. Grabe, diba? This is his very own words, sabi sa 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3. Pero in his great love for this people, the risen Christ appeared to Paul in a dream and encouraged him to carry on his work in the city. 
sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent for I am with you and no one is going to attack you and harm you because I have many people in this city. Wow. Motivated by what he knew was waiting for him in the city, he stayed in Corinth where many came to trust Jesus. After firmly establishing the church there, he left in AD 51, going back to Jerusalem. And number three, writing of 1 Corinthians. So after his time in Jerusalem, Paul was soon back at work among the Gentiles, or yung mga non-Jewish uh, people. And from AD 52 to 55, nag- na-enjoy niya yung napaka-fruitful na ministry in Ephesus, which is um, a mod- modern-day Turkey. Meanwhile, back in Corinth, others, others came to build on the foundation that Paul had left. These leaders did not appear to be bad leaders. Hindi naman necessarily bad leaders. But problems began to arise in Corinth nevertheless. Paul wrote a letter that has since been lost, referred to in 1 Corinthians 5, chap- uh, chapter 5, verse 9. But problems continued. It appears that the Corinthians wrote Paul a letter about some of their disagreements, and Paul heard about other problems from some members of Chloe's household. In response to these problems, Paul wrote around AD 55 to the Corinthians, focusing on the character and order of the Church of God. How should the Church reflect to the watching world the character of God? The Church must be Gospel-centered. The Church must be Gospel-centered. The Gospel is to be the organizing principle of the Church. Sabi ni, ni Paul early on sa, sa early parts ng, ng, first, ng first Corinthians, um, For Jews demand sign and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Paul spends his time writing to the Corinthians not individually, but as, as a family, as a church, corporately, because he believes church is important to the witness of the gospel. And in 1 Corinthians, we see that Paul um, wrote about three foundational aspects. I'm going to take these in turn, and they'll give us a thematic overview of the entire letter. A gospel-centered church is to be first united, second holy, and finally edifying. United, holy, edifying. In three words, Paul's letter to the Corinthians um, showed us a blueprint. And even today, um, for us Christians, um, a blueprint ng involvement natin sa local church today. Number one, a gospel-centered church is united. One of Paul's main motivations, kung ba't yung yung letter nito, is to speak about and counter yung kampi-kampihan and division among the members of the church. May kita natin to initially as Paul addresses yung rivalry and yung pagkakampi-kampi ng mga tao um, ng mga members uh, towards various teachers, right? Itong mga kampo seem to boast about their superior wisdom. So Paul passionately writes about the difference of God's wisdom and man's wisdom. He says, For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. So the unity that the kingdom promotes finds its basis in the cross of Jesus Christ, in the gospel, and not in the eloquence or yung gaano katamis, kaganda, ka, ka persuasive yung human, tsaka yung words niya. Or yung influence ng position, yung pagiging leader, pagiging um, teacher, or the force of a human personality, pagiging charismatic, being likable by people. Kung pupunta ka sa church dahil sa pastor, that is a wrong motivation. 
um, and time will show us that wrong motivation. The pastor or other leaders or other members will disappoint you, right? Even if he never or if he never disappoints you, he will someday die. You know, because life natin in in this earth is limited. Your faith cannot be built upon a person. True faith is built upon God in Jesus Christ. When you are grateful sa isang um, uh, sermon or preaching, sa, sa uh, prayer or sa pagkanta or sa paglead uh, during the service or during the small group, um, o kaya yung work na ating mga leaders or ng staff, um, or yung, 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 yung gawa ng inyong mga fellow members, Um, direct your thanksgiving first to the loving kindness of God para sa'yo. We should only boast in Jesus Christ because He is our redemption and He is our wisdom. He alone, Jesus alone, is worthy of our first allegiance and boasting. Any true gospel preacher, any faithful um, leader will point men and women to Christ alone and not to Himself. That's the first key to unity that we see in this letter. A focus on Christ alone is the answer for unity. Secondly, pinapakita ni Paul na disunity or division is a sign of worldliness with its quarreling and arguing. The root cause of the church division was and continues to be worldliness and immaturity. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 3-4 to You are still of the flesh, for while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? And the third key to unity is something we find in Paul's teaching on the Lord's Supper, the very place where unity should be most clearly expressed. Instead, Paul exhorted the Corinthians to remember that they were the body of Christ, built up by the diversity of spiritual gifts within the church. Siguro, many of you are not really um, concerned sa division ng Jews and Greeks today, no? Kasi malayo naman sa atin yung culture na yan. But what kind of divisions are present in our attitudes and actions towards others? Ano yung mga things today that cause us division, right? Maybe um, preference in music or uh, a certain allegiance to specific leaders only in the church. Um, as soon as we have this um, worldly divisions in our church, they are no longer Um, we are no longer the Church of Jesus Christ. May mga tao ba na you hesitate to spend time with in the church? Or baka ayaw mong mag-spend time sa kanya kasi hindi kayo same ng political beliefs, right? The beauty of the gospel is made apparent when we are united to people na hindi natin katulad. And gusto nating makita yon in the church, yung expression ng gospel. Um, this doesn't mean na hindi ka pwedeng magkaroon ng friends na similar sa'yo, no? That's perfectly fine. But the problem is when we all spend um, time um, and resources to only just uh, reach out and relate and minister to people na katulad natin, that's when... Um, bec- that's when we become selective and we do not express the heart of the gospel. Churches and Christians um, na gusto lang maging um, salt and light sa mga, kata- mga taong katulad nila or natin are, are inevitably dividing the body of Christ and, rep- and misrepresenting what it means to be a gospel-centered church. A fourth aspect pagdating sa unity in the church is that kung pag-usapan natin ang unity in the church, we must love one another um, without selfishness, right? Love and consideration for others should govern what we do, right? Love and consideration. Some of these examples are um, 
a love and consideration for the weak and the strong. Love and consideration for those who um, need the gospel, right? The, see, Paul uh, showed us this when he conceded yung mga personal rights niya para sa kapakanan ng ibang na ngailangan makarinig ng gospel. Um, we need to have um, love and consideration uh, for other believers and not cause them to stumble. This concern for others is crucial in a Christian church, in a gospel-centered church. And that is the context for perhaps the most famous section of the book in chapter 13, where we read of the supremacy of love. Normally, naririnig natin to sa uh, mga weddings, no? If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. I'm sure napaka-familiar nito <laughs> to many of us. Love is all about the quality of our interaction with others, right? Love is patient, kind, not boasting, not proud, not rude, not self-seeking. And of the wonderful gifts we receive from God, faith, hope, and love, the greatest is love. Yun po yung context ng, ng, ng chapter 13. It's not about romantic love, although pwede namang asamin yun for romantic love. It talks about um, yung Yung, yung, ano, yung picture ng beauty ng gospel in causing unity amidst the diversity. If we hold on to the gospel and unite around that, we will not have lived in vain. That's the first theme we see running through this book, Unity. A gospel-centered church is to be united. Secondly, a gospel-centered church is to be holy. At the very beginning of the letter, sinabi ni Paul, ni remind niya yung church of its calling to be holy and that it is Christ who makes us holy. You are holy. <laughs> I am holy. We are all called to be holy. Paul reminds us that the sexually immoral and others who are impure will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the church, the church is to be pure, remembering that it was saved from such impurity. Isa sa mga significant problems na inaddress ni Paul sa Corinthian Church, yung harap-harapan at katahasang immorality to which walang ginagawa yung church. The church was associated with the widely rumored instance ng incest, a sin shocking even among um, pagans, yung mga hindi naniniwala um, kay God. The church, astonishingly, was proud because they thought Accepting the offender showed their liberty. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans, for a man has his father's wife. And you are arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed among you. Pantinin niyo po na si Paul sobrang... Um, strong ng words na ginamit niya para sa kahindik-hindik na sin na ito. He does not address the sinner, but the church, kasi walang ginagawa yung church. This case is representative not of a small disease in the Corinthian church, but a case in which the church's own immune system in relation to sin has been compromised. Kumbaga, um, yung dapat na pag-pastor or pag-shepherd ng church within itself, hindi nagagampanan. You know? Um, underscoring this call to holiness, Paul offers in chapter 10 a warning from Israel's history na beginning well is no guarantee of perseverance in the faith. Hindi porket nagsimula ka ng strong in your faith journey, ay patuloy siyang magiging ganon. Because it does not guarantee Perseverance. Perseverance is something that has to be decided. Though all Israel saw the cloud by day, all passed through the Red Sea, all ate manna from heaven, and all drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. God was not pleased with most of them. In view of the fact that they were overthrown in the wilderness, in verse 6, Paul called the Corinthians 
and us that we might not desire evil as they did. Specifically, he mentions idolatry, sexual immorality, tempting Christ, and complaining, and, in, and concludes with this application. Now, these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. Um, tinapos ni Paul yung reminder that when interacting with the world, everything may be permissible, or lahat ay pwede, pero hindi lahat ay nakakabuti or beneficial. We should seek to live circumspectly, watching our lives carefully, rather than living in a wanton and unholy manner. Um, one tool or method that the Lord has given us for maintaining the organization and the holiness of the kingdom is biblical church discipline. So, nag-warn si Apostle Paul sa chapter 5 verse 6. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? When we encounter public sins of the serious reference here, we are not to think of ourselves kind or loving kung hindi naman natin nagagawan ng paraan or hindi natin hindi na nakapag-respond accordingly um, para sa kapakanan ng ating brother or sister na nasa gitna ng kasalanan. Paul gives us an instruction. Number one, as an assembly and as a church, we have to address the matter. Number two, by putting the brother out of the church. And number three, as a statement about the spiritual danger that they are in with the hopes that they will repent and be saved. So, think of this. Whenever we exercise church discipline, we do so to make it clear to someone that they are not living like a Christian. Right? And thus, should be concerned for their salvation. We should always exercise discipline with tender love and concern para sa taong um, nakakasala. This is one of the most uh, solemn, serious, uh, holy acts we ever undertake as a, as a family, as a local body. Pero napaka-central nito um, sa preservation ng, ng holiness and the glory of God in the church. We should also keep in mind that the church discipline goes beyond the public cases we consider corporately. Every relationship you have within the church has an opportunity to be uh, one that is characterized by love, by a loving uh, discipline. As we faithfully admonish and entreat one another as occasions may acquire, we are exercising discipline among, among each other that encourages holiness. Napaka-interesting, no? Um, considering the two things we've thought about so far, unity and holiness. Um, kadalasan sa churches today, we see our job as balancing sa gitna ng dalawa. We, hindi natin minsan ina-address yung particular sin sa, sa congregation or sa, sa church family kasi natatakot tayo na baka masira yung unity, baka hindi na siya maging peaceful. On the other hand, meron naman sa atin na sobrang zealous, sobrang passionate for holiness na gagawin natin yun even at the expense of unity. Pero si Paul, nakita niya yung holiness and unity going hand in hand. If we begin to tolerate yung sin na hindi uh, nire-repent, yung unrepentant sin sa church, problems with unity will follow as you see sa Corinthians. The separation the Corinthians were to experience was a separation from the world. Instead, tinolerate nila, pinayagan nila yung sin. Thus, encouraging internal division and experiencing a separation from one another. On the other hand, Paul makes it clear that even when dealing with issues we might consider to be moral, such as eating meat, sacrificing to idols, we must handle these with unity at the forefront of our attention. Kung nag-iisip ka kung paano um, nag-fit together yung unity tsaka holiness, um, I'd encourage you to take time reading and studying this letter with that in mind. Holiness, unity, together. That is our calling as a church. A gospel-centered church is to be united. A gospel-centered church is to be holy. And lastly, a gospel-centered church is to be edifying. 
So, napag-usapan natin yung um, unity, tsaka holiness, and that quite naturally brings us to the third theme through this letter, a gospel-centered church is to be edifying. Napaka-interesting na makita si Paul, uh, ideal yung napaka, like, a good number of problems in such a way that the Corinthians might act in, in ways that edify each other, right? One strategy Paul uses is to encourage us to give up our rights. Wow, <laughs> napaka um, intense idea, especially with everything that's going on today, you know? It seems that throughout the letter, Paul is addressing selfishness of one sort or the other in the church. Yung selfishness na yon or yung self-centeredness gave rise to the partisan fractions we mentioned earlier. Or yung, um, yung um, pagpapanig, pagkukumpul-kumpul ng mga tao depende sa kung sinong leader. So, um, meron din na mention si Paul na disarray in the use of gifts and failure to consider others um, and to love, to love and consider other people. So, para um, i-counter yung confusing effect ng disorder, tsaka para ma- ma-deal yung issue at its roots, Paul directed the members of the Corinthian church na gamitin nila yung freedom nila, yung liberty nila in ways na para sa pag-serve sa kapwa tsaka sa pag-alaga sa kapwa. For example, sabi ni Paul, nag-instruct siya regarding eating food sacrificed to idols na kakabangit lang natin sa chapter 8. Paul reasoned that because an idol literally is nothing and there is only one true God and that all and that all things are from Him and for Him, we are free to eat what we will or what we want because food does not condemn us, or food does not bring us closer to God. However, there are those who are weaker in conscience, who may be led into sin because they do not understand the freedom available in Christ. Kumbaga, parang truth yon, food does not condemn or bring us closer to God, but there are those who are, are, are young or parang weak pa in their conviction. Paul says that, to, that our exercise of freedom whether we eat or or eat uh, whether we can eat yung yung food sacrificed to I, to idols become a stumbling block to the weak kasi that's something that they don't understand yet in that case our decision to eat is actually a sin against our brother for whom Christ died and a sin against Christ so we are to forego, or kailang, um, we have to suspend certain things in our in our own lives, even for a while maybe, or for a, like a good time, uh, like a good long a length of time, in order that those who see us, those who observe us, uh, particularly the weaker in knowledge from among our body, will not be harmed, and maintain yung, yung order and unity. Paul describes his own ministry as an example of this general principle that we should forgo our rights for the sake of weaker Christians. Kasi, you know, throughout the letter, Paul's focus in, is on resolving differences and problems with an eye towards preserving order and loving one another rather, rather than, than protecting our own rights. Ang, ang gandang picture lang, if you think about it. When you lay down your rights for the sake of people na hindi sila ma-stumble, that is such a beautiful display of gospel love. Sa culture like Corinth, uh, where everyone is trying to safeguard their own reputation, napakahalaga sa kanila ng honor or ng, 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 ng public image, um, and they can get whatever they can para sa sarili nila. Itong pag-lay down ng rights, yung pag-suspend ng rights para sa kapakanan ng kapwa is such a powerful um, image, you know, uh, and a powerful expression of the gospel. Um, yun exactly yung ginawa ni Jesus, eh, di ba? Uh, yung, yung beauty ng cross. The beauty of the cross is in the humility of the one who voluntarily na nag-lay down um, ng, ng kanyang place uh, in heaven para sa ating uh, ikabubuti. Though He had every right to leave us in our sin. This is, this is why grace, the grace of Jesus is so amazing. Sabi ng isang um, American pastor, si Mark Dever, um, 
From my perspective as a pastor, it becomes clear over time which brothers and sisters in a church have an edifying effect on those around them. They do not need to chair a committee. They do not need to teach Sunday school class. You can simply watch God gradually commit different ministries and opportunities into the hands of certain people because they love Him and are willing to quietly give themselves in love for others without particular concern that they be right or be recognized. We should all strive to be this type of Christian, not, not those who look to protect reputation, you know. We should all strive to be this type of Christian. Hindi yung, yung tao na napaka-concerned tungkol sa, uy, ministry ko to, uy, ano ko, I am leader, ganyan, ganyan. But those who are, but, but we can be like those who are quietly and lovingly serving one another. You know? Kahit wala nakatingin, we continue to do um, what God has called us to do. Maybe that's a good reflection question. Will you still be doing the things that you do for the Lord if nobody is looking? Another strategy na ginagamit ni Paul to appeal to our role as a church is imagining Christ. Imagining Christ. You see this especially dun sa mga problema na dinideal ni Paul dito sa letter na to. Um, na may kinalaman sa public meetings of the church. Kasama dyan yung role ng men and women in the church, yung abuse ng Lord's Supper, and the exercise of the Spirit's gifts, or yung what we call spiritual gifts. Especially those that seem more spectacular or yung parang very grand tignan. This church had become so disorderly na yung public meetings nila were said to do more harm than good. So, yung church, the Corinthian church, ay in-instruct ni, ni Paul to honor yung order of headship established by God. God is the head of everything, of everyone, of all things. Christ is the head of every man and man is the head of woman even though neither man nor woman is independent of the other in Christ. At the Lord's Supper, divisions are to be put away and we are to wait upon one another so that we might remember the Lord's death in unison. Diba? The last of these problems associated with the public meetings of the church was the use of spiritual gifts. Linked to the desire to be impressive was the Corinthian infatuation with the gift of tongues. Remember, di ba, yung, yung culture sa, 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 um, sa Corinth na parang ano, marami ka following, you know, you're a, you're, a, you're a charismatic speaker, ganyan. So this, uh, this gift of tongues was very, um, uh, was taken with a wrong motivation, was aspired to with the wrong motivation. Um, this played itself out in two ways, okay? Na parehong hindi okay kasi they, they, um, they undermine the health and growth of the whole church. Um, it made those who didn't speak in tongues wonder kung may place ba talaga para sa kanila dun sa congregation. And dun naman sa may mga gift of tongue, sa may mga gift, sa mga gift, of tongues, uh, na ma-feel naman nila na they are the, the most important in the church, na super spiritual, the the ano, the star players, ganyan. Paano in-address ni Paul lahat ng to? So, remember the words that Jesus spoke to Paul on the road to, the, to Damascus. Sabi niya, Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? Paul knew that Jesus is so identified with Christians that he would call them to me, to himself, to Jesus' self. And so Paul use, uses this imagery ng body ni Christ to show how <laughs> so crazy, so so um, unbelievable, and how Christ dishonoring yung infatuation nila with one gift over another. Okay? Sabi sa um, chapter 12, verse 27, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So, to the person who doubts yung iyong pagiging member ng body of Christ, kasi wala ka ng gift na, na inaasam mo sana, ito yung sinasabi ni Paul. For the body does not consist of one member but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. 
And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. To the more spiritual Christian who thought na he only counted in the body, or you only counted in the body because of your gift, ito naman yung sinasabi ni Paul. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, to the head, to the, to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. So as a result, yung guiding principle ni Paul for spiritual gifts is one of edification. In chapter 14, verse 12, sabi niya, Since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Wow, that's such a beautiful reminder. May tendency, may tendency ka ba to look down na on those people who don't have the gifts that you have? Um, those are still gifts, right? And those are not self-developed abilities, right? A gift is something that was given to us, not because we deserve it, but it's um, totally upon. It's totally up to the person na nagbigay nun. So, the Spirit uh, gifted us with these things. Hindi dahil magaling ako or perfect ako, ganyan. Pero kasi simply gusto niyang ibigay. Right? Hindi ito, hindi mo yan in They don't originate with you. Hindi mo siya ginawa. So, why is there a, feel, uh, why is there a, a need to feel proud about them? They are not given to you for your glory, but for the good of the whole church. And if it's good for the church, it brings glory for, to God. So whatever gifts we have should be humbled. And we should see them as a stewardship to be spent on the good of others. Para sa kapwa. Paren. To build up the church. The point in the use of spiritual gifts, regardless of what those may be, is edification. Not merely of the individual exercising the gift, but of the whole body. So, when was the last time na nagpunta kang church um, na ang goal mo is to edify others um, na yun yung driving force ng puso mo? Or do you, when you go to church, ang goal mo ba is, okay, I receive, feed me, people, parang ganun. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but if, it, if that is the driving force, maybe that's something that you can think about. Um... Do you usually anticipate what you personally will find most helpful? Like whether uh, a song or a prayer um, na magmamove sa'yo or whether you get out on time. Ala, bakit? Ano na si pastor? Ano ba yan? Or whether you speak to the right people afterward. When was the last time that you were genuinely concerned about yung edification ng, ng kapatid mo, ng brother or ng sister mo in Christ? Not in the sense na... Um, nagustuhan ba nila yung yung hymn or yung song uh, but in the sense na na-build ba yung faith nila do you seek out your close friends after service o o you also uh, help others feel welcome ngayon medyo iba yung setup natin no but there are ways that we can do to help others uh, feel welcome in our family as God's family do you pray before and during the service that God would particularly use this time that you have, that we have together uh, on a Sunday uh, as a church family to work not just in my heart, but in the hearts of other people as well? Challenging ba to? Ito mga thoughts na to uh, para sa'yo. Well, that's a good attitude. That's a good burden to have. Right? Kesa sa, hindi, okay na yan. Gets ko na yan. Okay na yan. Um, basta, hayaan mo na. I mean, um, humility is always a good place to begin. Um, when you have that burden, you know, um, God can multiply that so that you can desire to love and edify others. Pag-pray natin yung church natin na maging place to where others... Um, 
can feel safe um, na may edify sila that they will feel um, built up in their faith and hindi self-promotion yun nangyari hindi self-centeredness yun nangingibabaw um, because we have been bought by the blood of Christ to become his body when when you go to ch- uh, when you be gather as a church think about that the other person on the screen the person na kita mo sa screen or when we gather physically those people my brothers and sisters are people that Christ has sacrificed his blood for that he has bought um, with a price by his blood the gospel centered church is to be characterized by unity holiness and edification sa lahat ng bagay na to, we are not to think like the world we are to have the gospel as the organizing principles as the as the driving force in our lives as we close this lesson i think it would be helpful na tanongin natin ating mga sarili several questions to help us evaluate areas na kailangan natin mag-grow in our understanding and in our actions. Do we solve conflicts or do we contribute to them? Do we resist the temptation to boast in or even to worship other human beings or do we yield to it? Are we absolutely pure in our relationship with the other sex or with the same sex? Or are we calculating and compromising? Are we using our spiritual gifts to build up all the members of the Christian community? Or are we hoarding our gifts or using them for our own selfish advantage? Are our actions motivated by love and a desire to edify others? or by some other inferior motivation? Are we givers or takers? Do you come to church merely to consume? Pag-isipan natin itong mga bagay na to. And let's reflect on these things for our own lives. And let's pray that yung unity, yung holiness, and yung um, edification will become so apparent in our church and in your church if you are tuning in from another church um, because uh, the name of Jesus deserves no other picture but that beautiful expression of the gospel that we preach. Let's pray. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. I pray, Lord God, na bigyan nyo kami ng picture, ng solid picture of what uh, a family, your body that is united, your body that is uh, holy, your body that is um, edifying one another, um, to be at the forefront of our minds, Lord God, na we will work towards that in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Um, so that the so that we honor you so that we build up one another so that it brings us joy and so that the world will see yung yung gano ka powerful yung gospel that it can cross through divisions and it can unite people and it can bring people outside of a place of sin and it can look beyond itself it helps people look beyond themselves Father, patawarin niyo kami sa mga panahon, sa maraming panahon na we are only looking for the good of our own selves. Um, help us to repent, Lord God. Help us to confess to you these things and to turn away from them and go back to um, yung picture that we have seen in 1 Corinthians today. What seems foolishness for the world is beautiful and wise and great in your eyes. Help us have that same uh, vision, to have that same heart, Lord God. And if there's anyone who is tuning in right now, who is not, uh, not yet part of your family, who has not been born again, Father, I pray that you would speak to him, speak to her, cause something in the heartstrings to stir that will appoint him or her to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, crucified, um, resurrected, and risen. Thank you, Lord, for today. And may we become the church that you desire us to be. Only by your grace 
in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. To the glory of the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.